Okay, welcome everyone, as I said, to this higher education information evening for parents and carers of students at all East Coast College campuses, including Lowestoft Sixth Form and the campuses at Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft. So um, what we're going to be looking at this evening is um, taking you through the support that we give young people in our colleges with respect to um, their applications to higher education. So all students on level three um, courses on all campuses will receive higher education support, both in tutorials and also one-to-one -one individually whilst they're at college. Sometimes also you will find that on an ongoing basis, this support is coming through their teachers as well in all of their lessons. So the support that we're giving includes looking at their progression route. So are they interested in going to university, apprenticeships or employment? So we're not pushing anyone into any options. We're giving them the time and the support to make sure they make the right decision. We are then working through how and when to apply if students decide that applying to university is what they would like. So going through the application through UCAS and also working through their personal statement. We also provide support around any tests linked to application and any university entrance interviews. This year has been particularly tricky. And what we have done is support young people with um, online mock interviews in the college and um, certainly looking at um, multidisciplinary um, questions around um, applications to areas such as medicine. So we're trying to make sure that students are meeting all deadlines on time and all tasks are completing. So we're keeping an eye on everything that's happening throughout the academic year before they leave college. Okay, moving on, please. So first of all, what we need you to know is that there are two critical dates that nationally have to be met by students. So anyone applying to university who is looking to go to Oxford or Cambridge or to study medicine, veterinary medicine or dentistry has to have their application in by six o'clock on the 15th of October. And the national deadline for all other university degree courses is the 26th of January at six o'clock again. So those are two critical dates. And again, we will be reminding students. And this evening, um, just moving on swiftly, what we are doing is looking at certain aspects of application to university. And we are very fortunate in that we have three speakers to take you through each of these aspects. So why go to university? Rebecca Foster from um, the University of East Anglia is going to talk us through this. And then we have uh, Nicola Rushby talking through student finance. And then we also have um, Kerry Payne from um, the University of Suffolk at East Coast College talking a, about degrees at East Coast. And then I'll bring it all together with closing remarks. And if you have any questions as we move forward, could you please type them into the Q&A box? Okay, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the evening and over to Rebecca. Hello. So um, I am, it say Heather Monsey at the bottom. So uh, apologies about that. I have stepped in last minute uh, due to sickness. So Heather unfortunately can't be uh, with us, but I'm gonna be speaking through today about why do people go to university? So a lot of this will um, be applicable for degrees on the whole. So when Kerry speaks later about for uh, degrees at further education colleges as well, this is very applicable for that. But some of it is unique uh, to the university experience uh, when we're looking at things like accommodation and those sorts of things as well. Uh, so I am based at the University of East Anglia, but I do work for the outreach department. So everything I speak about here is, um, impartial advice and guidance so no matter where you are looking uh, if you want to go to university anywhere in the UK this is all applicable um, uh, up and down the UK but I will use some UA examples for the simple reason that uh, they're at my fingertips because uh, uh, I'm based at the university. 
So when we look at why people go to university, uh, we tend to look at four top reasons. Uh, so we've got the four categories here. We're looking at career. So every one of the pathways that students go down, whether that be going down the apprenticeship route, the employment route, or the university or higher education route, um, there are going to be thinking about the career uh, at the end of it because we will all need to work is what we'll spend the majority of our life doing as well. So it's a really important factor to think about. The second thing and a really good reason to go to university is because you simply enjoy learning. Uh, you simply love uh, gaining knowledge and there's a lot of more knowledge that you can get in different subjects uh, at university beyond what you might uh, be offered at sixth form and college as well uh, in a wide variety of subjects uh, due to how large uh, university institutions are and how many people are there. And then we'll finish off with looking at the things slightly outside of the academic side. So things like life skills, for example, um, and social uh, life as well. Well, so hopefully this will be illuminating uh, if we have any young people watching, uh, but also uh, for parents and carers. So if you do have any questions, um, you might mainly have questions about student finance, which will be covered by Nicola. But hopefully this is all of the uh, sort of things that get you excited. And then the student finance will talk about how you actually then pay for it uh, as well. Uh, next slide, please. Lovely. So we're going to firstly have a look at career and the sort of career prospects that doing a degree uh, gets you. Uh, so you might be thinking, what is it about a degree that employers like? Why does um, employability, employability rise if people have a degree as opposed to people that don't? And the number one answer that we get from employers is the transferable skills that that additional three years or four years of education gives to a student. So they're gaining skills like independence, uh, especially things like problem solving, because uh, a massive part of university and university based learning is being given a real world problem that the world is facing right now and um, having to think about past problems and use that to solve it and talk about those, and discuss those things. And that is exactly what is happening in a workplace as well. There's a huge amount of organization, planning, timekeeping, because you might have slightly less timetabled hours. So you need to work out what you're doing in the rest of the time. And again, that is very similar in the workplace. Uh, you will have, be given projects and need to resolve those by certain deadlines. There's a huge amount of communication skills that goes on in seminars, uh, which are small discussion classes where you discuss problems or pieces of reading that you've done. There's a huge amount of critical thinking, research skills and really soft skills like teamwork and presentation skills as well. And what this all leads to is a very well-rounded person who is very much ready for the next step uh, when it comes to employment. So these additional three years give you the opportunity to think about how you're gaining these skills. So as soon as you're in an interview, you can uh, pinpoint those skills that you've gained from that degree and you've got an extra string to your bow. So 75% of employers are looking for any degree because of the transferable skills uh, that you gain from it as well. What also comes with heightened employability uh, sorry, what, what also comes with a degree is heightened employability. So graduates are more likely to have higher employment rates than non-graduates. And in an employment market that can be quite volatile, like the one at the moment, it's basically the more um, qualifications someone has, uh, the more strings they've got to their bow, the more competitive they can be. Um, and it could be that one extra thing uh, that uh, helps you get that interview over the other applicants. So it's, it's a really big career win in that respect. What also comes with um, moving uh, into sort of employment and sort of um, with graduates is actually the profitability of doing a degree. So a lot of people get very scared about um, doing degrees because there's um, negative press around things like debt uh, and big scary figures. But what we always try and remind students of is that it's an investment in yourself. So on average, grad graduates earn 20% more in their lifetime uh, than those without a degree. So even if the outgoing cost is £40,000, 
on average in your lifetime, you could be earning over a hundred thousand pounds more than your uh, peers without a degree. So it is really investment in yourself that pays massive dividends uh, in the long term. And as Nicola will talk about, the repayments with a loan are not quite as scary as they might at first appear. So it is more of a graduate tax than a big scary lump of a loan anyway. Um, so all of that sort of rounded up um, showcases the real profitability, um, but also that you're given more chances in employment uh, when it comes to having a, a degree. There are things like graduate schemes uh, that are basically schemes that are only open to people with degrees, which can um, make, allow people to sort of jump a couple of rungs. If you think about a career like a ladder, uh, you can go straight into management possibilities, getting paid to be trained and then ending up at something like a regional manager without having to spend years working your way up the ladder. Uh, and there are also additional opportunities uh, that can not only help students work out exactly what they want to do, because it can be a really daunting prospect for an 18 year old to choose what they want to do with the rest of their life. And you don't have to choose what the rest you want to do the rest of your life after a degree either, uh, but it can give you a taste and the opportunity to try out different things to work out exactly what you want to do. So there's things like a year in industry uh, where it's almost like a placement year where you can get paid to go and work in a local business that's related to your degree. So say, for example, you're doing an energy engineering degree, you might go work for a wind farm for a year and be paid £15,000 for that year. And then they might offer you a job at the end of it. There's years abroad where you get to go and study that subject in a country, in a different, um, in a different country. Uh, so, for example, I had a friend who did a year abroad on her law degree and she went to Copenhagen for a year. Um, and off the back of that, she learned um, some of the language and uh, the, the employment. Um, it really helped her with employment, having that experience. She's mentioned it in interviews since because she works for a global brand that has links with Denmark. Uh, there are internships, there are placement, there are volunteering opportunities, and they find that within these uh, opportunities, um, the people that are running them are often a lot more forgiving than perhaps uh, with people in the larger pool of employment who they might expect to have experience because um, they know that they're talking to graduates, uh, sorry, they're talking to people currently doing degrees. Uh, and so it can, with no experience, you can get um, opportunities to help you gain experience as well. So the second point we're going to touch on today is knowledge. And basically, one of the best reasons to do a degree is because you love that subject and you have a thirst for knowledge and you want to gain more knowledge. It is three years, so it is important to really want to do something. And as we sort of said earlier, having any degree can be beneficial. So if you don't know what you want to do with the rest of your life, and this is certainly what I did, I just wanted to carry on learning about something and on that journey I had opportunities and I started to work out a bit more what I wanted to do uh, from having a degree. So it's important for you to try and think if you are thinking about university to break things down and to have a think about what kind of courses you might be interested in but what this number actually uh, does is create hopefully a fair amount of excitement because there are over 35,000 courses uh, to go and study a degree in a further education college or a university. And um, that basically means that no matter what you're interested in, there will be a subject for you. So it might be something outside of what you've been offered in your school or college. So you could go study something like American studies, for example. You could go study natural sciences, which is a mix of all of the different sciences together. Or you might be given the opportunity to study something vocational uh, if you already have a job in mind. But hopefully you will get excited about all of the different things you can study because it's important if you're doing something for three years to really um, get excited by the prospect of it as well. So alongside that, um, there you are not completely left alone. You're not just chucked in the deep end and expected to swim. It is an academic step up, uh, higher education, that's why it's called higher education after further education, but there's lots of support available to you um, to help you with that next step of the journey. 
So they're not only academic support, so there's peer support and mentoring, for example, and academic help from people like personal tutors, those in second and third year and workshops available as well to help people to make that transition from BTEX, CTEX um, or A levels to degree level study. If you're learning new skills like exam skills or independent study or academic skill, uh, academic writing skills that might be slightly different, there's plenty of opportunities for you to seek out that help. But it is up to the student uh, to seek out that help um, independently. Um, because we believe this gives really, really vital skills for then when you go into the workplace and you need to seek out uh, skills and help uh, from employers as well. It is also worth bearing in mind that in the first year of majority of degrees, um, the, it doesn't have weighting uh, with the final uh, degree grade. So basically what that means is the first year tens for majority of universities, uh, the student needs to just pass and then the second and third year uh, grades are calculated. Uh, the grades are calculated from the second and third year. So that again, gives a bit of a safety net for students to adjust to a completely new transition of education, but also lifestyle uh, as well. So there's lots of other support, finance advice, if it's the first time uh, students are dealing with money, uh, mental and wellbeing and health advice. We understand that leaving school uh, is a big transition and when we have transition people need support uh, so a lot of universities have really good uh, zero week waiting lists for things like counselling there's disability support advice uh, to help people with uh, learning difficulties and physical disabilities um, and if someone's not getting on or um, they're struggling to fit in uh, with their flat or anything like that there are uh, student service uh, residents as well to help with that help people move so it's just a really supported way of gaining independence and that next stage in life. So that once you've got your degree and you've already experienced those sort of things, you're then ready for that jump to employment without it all happening at the exact same time. So final two points uh, that we're gonna talk about with the benefits of university and why people uh, like to go is life skills and social. So we've sort of touched on the career and academic side and the main thing about life skills is the independence you gain. So don't, um, uh, a lot of people assume that you have to move away from home if you want to go to university, and that is not the case. You will gain life skills if you're what we call a commuter student, or if you're someone who moves away uh, to go and live in accommodation on campus or at a city university. Uh, People, a lot of people are surprised by how many people do commute to university. So at UEA, for example, it's 25% of the student population um, and they feel just as much as part of the community and still gaining these life skills as well. But if students do choose to move away, uh, they might be cooking uh, for the sort of first time. They might be budgeting for the first time, paying bills, laundry, and all of those sort of things accumulate to give students self-confidence. Uh, and that great feeling of independence in a settled in and supported way with people are, that are also making those first steps on that journey. And I personally uh, find, and Nicola might uh, find the same as she went to university as well, that it was the first time in my life that I'd been around people uh, that I didn't know since primary school. So I, I didn't know anyone that I went to my university with. And that overcoming adversity together created a real bond. Uh, and a lot of fun with just things like learning how to uh, boil an egg for the first time and those sort of things. And so the, when I then left university, I felt very prepared and ready uh, to deal with the trials and tribulations of things like council tax, um, shared rent bills and all those sort of things as well as applying for jobs. Uh, and so it wasn't all too stressful at the same time. So um, I've, I won't touch on this too much because uh, I don't want to uh, steal Nicola's presentation, um, but you will also to be able to support you with your living costs uh, and students with their living costs at university um, get tuition fee loans and living cost loans. And this is no matter where you do a degree, whether it be at university or whether it be um, at a further education college as well. But essentially, it does create a bit of a safety net. Um, I don't know anyone at university that didn't have a loan, uh, but essentially 
it means that there's um people are sort of learning to budget for the first time but without the, the immediate stress if something doesn't quite work out right financially there are loans that the university can give you to get you back into a good financial situation without feeling the real um hardships of uh not being able to pay rent and those sort of things in the same way so that loan can be an excellent safety net um, to sort of help people learn those life skills uh, without it being the real real hard way uh, as well so the final fun bit that i'm going to touch on and i did this presentation to students earlier and i asked them why they wanted to go to university and they said partying uh, so that social is an element of um university hopefully it won't be the whole element for uh, the reasons why people want to go because there will need to be some study going on but having a good time is a huge part of university it doesn't have to be associated with drinking uh, it, a lot there's a lot of sober societies there's a lot of um parts of every society the university holds people to ensuring that both um everyone feels welcome within them as well uh, but a lot of what comes into it, if we actually break down sort of the parties and the nightclubbing, the things that you frequently see, is meeting new people, uh, having new experiences and getting involved in things like uh, clubs and societies as well. So the reason that social life is and sort of students feel so free and enjoy themselves so much at university is because their timetables tend to be a lot more condensed. Uh, than uh, and less structured than perhaps at school and college. It's not always the case. Uh, there are people, especially on STEM subjects and medicine, uh, that have very full 35 hour uh, contracts and they feel like they're getting very good value for money uh, because of that. Um, but what you're often expected to do on social science courses, so things like business, economics, and humanities, so things like English and history, is fill the rest of your time with study. But it is up to you if you rather do your study in the um, afternoon and then have the evening to go out. If you don't have any lectures on the Wednesday, you are able to do that. If you'd rather have your evening to do society, um, clubs and societies, you can do that. If you'd rather do something with your afternoon and have your evenings to study, you can do that as well. So there's a lot of flexibility um, to go and see friends, have a bit more time other than the weekend. Uh, there's not as much living for the weekend. Uh, when it comes to university because the amount of free time you have so yeah overall um people love it and if we've learned anything about the past year of education and working that school is definitely not just about studying it's not just about um being in the classroom there's so many other elements that makes it an excellent experience um and so there is that meeting new people the trying new things and ultimately that does uh, lead to people having the time of their life. If you speak to majority of people um, about why they love university, they'll just say it's been some of the best years of my life. I'd recommend it to anyone, and I can very much reiterate that um, as well uh, from my experience as well. So the reason people love it so much is, and the kind of things that you can try that are new, things like clubs and societies. There's things like hummus society. There's things like dance sports music basically anything you can think of there's over 200 clubs and societies so if you think that there's maybe 400 people or um, maybe even a thousand people at your schools and colleges and there might be four thousand people in your year so you'll find people with similar sort of interests um, as well or the students find themselves with similar interests you can go to art galleries and um, students can go to gigs uh, they can get involved in student campaigns and it's just the kind of things that you don't frequently get offered. I certainly don't get emails about, hey, do you want to join uh, my drama production or anything like that every day um, that can just be really enriching, uh, really help you to find out who you are, what your interests are, to maybe even take those on and make those into a job. And I know a lot of people that started off doing things like drama society alongside their economics degrees and are now actors uh, because they found their passion uh, within that. Uh, so I won't show this video because I don't think it will work, uh, but what we'll do is we'll send you a link to our resources centre uh, through Marie after today. 
which essentially has loads of information from students. So I'm a little bit out of university now. Um, if, the, if the link works, um, then we can give it a go. But it's, this is essentially um, from James. Um, oh, his name has completely escaped me. Very famous Radio 1. Greg James, that's it, uh, who went to the University of East Anglia talking about the club uh, and society that launched him into his career, which was uh, radio, uh, the part being live wire radio. So if we can try and play that, let's see if that works. Well, my drama degree really helped me in terms of I wanted a degree and I wanted that, that discipline and I wanted to do essays and dissertations and read books and stuff and, and learn lines and do plays. But the, the, direct, the thing that directly helped my career was probably live wire. The student radio station and I look back on it so fondly I was looking at photos earlier today because I had to send some off to do it for an interview for the Sun and stuff and they wanted some photos of me when I was at uni so I was looking back at old live wire photos and it was just the best three years ever it was um, I was with my mates doing radio shows I was was the station manager which I hated because I was terrible at being a boss awful at being a boss I couldn't organize anything I couldn't do admin I couldn't organize meetings I forgot to turn up to stuff I couldn't tell people off, so I realised that I didn't ever want to be a boss ever again. And being a presenter was the only thing I wanted to do. And um, but Livewire was was in incredibly important in that it let me just do anything I wanted on the radio, and that is and that has helped me so much in in what I do now. So it's been it was absolutely vital, and I don't think I'd be here today without that student radio station. So. If you can't take it from me, uh, take it from Greg James uh, to sort of showcase how these student opportunities um, are not only a good time, but can absolutely lead to your passion and your dream uh, coming to fruition uh, as well. So just to wrap it all up uh, before we hand over to Nicola to talk about student finance. Um, hopefully today has given you a really good insight into what university can offer students. It can help with career opportunities for not only helping with employability rates, but also um, letting people access sort of the top rungs of career ladders so that they really can do something they're passionate about. They can move up into new, innovating and exciting things and also get the pay that they deserve as well. They can study something they love, but in a supported environment. Um, they can develop valuable life skills again in a supported way so that then when they have uh, some trials and tribulations with adult life, it's not all at the same time uh, and uh, they have friends to sort of support them through it who are doing the same journey and they have the opportunity to meet new people, try new things that ultimately could make it uh, some of the best three years of their life and an absolutely life changing opportunity as well. Thank you very much for listening and I will pass you over. Thank you um, very much. Um, so yes, um, I'm not going to turn my camera on only for the reason that when I turn it on, um, it seems to um, make my internet go a little bit slower. And the last thing I want is to be kicked out of the webinar and I want you to be able to hear everything that I tell you about student finance today. Um, so um, my name is Nicola and I work in the schools and colleges team at the University of Lincoln. I attended the University of Lincoln myself on an undergraduate degree for three years. So I am familiar with the process of applying for university and also applying for student finance as well. So student finance is probably the, the second most important thing to get organised for university. So the first being actually um, making that application and the third being applying for accommodation. It really isn't the scary thing that it's made out to be. Um, so hopefully this talk today will help answer those questions that you might have. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just start with some of the basics and just tell you a little bit about Lincoln, just so you know what we're about before we move on to the main topic. So for anyone who is not familiar with Lincoln, as you can see on the map, we are based in the East Midlands. If you're familiar with Nottingham and Sheffield, we're about 40 miles away from them and probably around about 130-ish miles from um, where you are at the moment. We are what we call a campus-based university and we sit right in the heart of the historic city of Lincoln, which we always say offers a lovely mix of old and new um, uphill. Um, if you're not familiar with it already, we have the fantastic Lincoln Cathedral and the Lincoln Castle and it's full of lots of history up there. And as you move down the hill onto the high street, it's very modern and very much a student-led city. So there's plenty of things for students to do. 
Uh, we've recently been awarded the title Modern University of the Year by the Times and Sunday Times Good University Guide 2021. And as you can see on the screen as well, we've got great graduate prospects with 96% of our graduates being in work or further study within six months of finishing their course. Over 70% of our students walk to campus every single day. Um, everything is very conveniently reachable by foot. So all of the shops, the, uh, the cafes, the restaurants. So there's very little need for public transport and very little need for a car as well. So um, before we move on, um, if you do want to take any notes, please feel free. Um, there will be some contact details at the end as well for you to get in touch with this. So these are what sort of the aims and objectives that we're going to look at today. So we'll be looking at the UCAS timeline and having a look at where student finance actually fits into that timeline. We'll be having a look at what students actually have to pay for, what available funding there is, and also any additional support, how students actually apply for student finance, the repaying the loans, and then some key bits to remember as well. So we'll start with the UCAS timeline. So here you can see um, the student finance sections highlighted for when student finance normally opens, um, which is normally around February um, or March time. And then also when students need to apply um, for their student finance by to guarantee funding for the time that they start um, their, their studies. So as soon as student finance opens, um, which it has done now for um, this year, um, I recommend that you encourage your child to apply as soon as possible. So as a rough idea, um, the deadline for student finance this year to guarantee um, funding in time for their studying was the 21st of May. So that just gives you a rough idea. Um, please bear in mind, it can actually take up to six weeks to process the application as well. Um, at some point, your child will be asked which institution will be their firm choice. If they don't know, then just advise them to put in the one that they think it will be, as it can easily be changed in the future if they change their mind or if they perhaps don't get that place at university and end up going to a different one. Um, it's also worth bearing in mind that last year in the 2020 cycle, just under 50% of all initial applications for finance weren't actually started until after the May deadline. So if some students were still waiting for their finance to come through in November because they applied late. So really do encourage them to meet the deadline um, as it'll make it a lot less stressful um, and make it a lot more seamless for them. And it's just one less thing to worry about. The other major thing to consider within this timeline is student accommodation. So if accommodation is required, then each university will have their own start time and also a deadline to guarantee um, a place at the accommodation. Um, that's why I've not included it in this graphic because it is different for each university. But for instance, here at Lincoln, we open our accommodation applications in November. Um, but to be able to apply students much must make us their firm choice. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please. And then if you could just click for me, thank you. <laughs> so um, now we're going to talk about the loans. So in the end, um, the loans students receive are added together for repayment purposes. But to start with, it's easy to divide the loans into two separate parts. So the first part is the tuition fee loan. So this pays for not just someone to teach your child, but also the teaching facilities that they are taught in um, and any other learning resources that they will use. And then there's the maintenance loan, which is basically the living costs. So that's your part two. And this helps to pay towards their accommodation, things like their food, um, other bills, uh, social life, and any other activities that they might want to get involved in whilst they're at university. Um, so let's take a look at these in a little more detail if we go to the next slide. So the tuition fee loan is the first part. Um, please obviously bear in mind that any figures that I give you today are for 2021 entry, um, and these figures can change. You should be able to find out the figures for um, 2022 entry around um, December time or around sort of January next year, they'll be published. So the tuition fee loan is the easy bit. It's probably the most simple bit. Um, the tuition fee loan is not means tested. So students get what they ask for it's paid directly to the institution that they are attending by Student Finance England on their behalf. So they never see it, so they don't really have to worry about it. 
Although partial loans are available, um, I would always recommend taking out a full loan. Um, and a lot of people ask why, but the reason is unlike any other loan, the student finance loan repayments are calculated on the amount your child earns, not the amount that they have borrowed. So my recommendation would be to borrow the maximum loan, which um, currently is £9,250 per year. And it's as simple as that, that is your tuition fee loan. So then we have the maintenance loan. Um, it's not too complex, but it's a little more, a little bit more complicated than the, the tuition fee loan. It just takes a little bit more figuring out. So um, all who apply for the um, maintenance loan will get a minimum amount. Above this minimum though, um, the amount your child will get is dependent on a number of um, really important factors. And these factors are where they are studying. So that could be their local university um, or local college, or it could be further away or in London, where they live whilst they're studying. So for example, it could be that they are living at home whilst they're studying, or they're actually living at accommodation near their university. And finally, the most important one is the income of the household. So this is calculated on the salary income of the main breadwinners in the home and any additional income from other sources, such as pensions and any second homes or any other investments. So be prepared that your child will need your help um, and that you will need to supply at some point some financial evidence on their application. This time, the money they get is paid into their bank account. And so it's up to them to be looking after that money. Payments are generally made in three instalments, which tends to be around September, October time, January, and then um, around April. So this is paid direct to them. So it's really important for them to make sure they are managing this money to help them cover any of their outgoings that they may have. And that could be social related ones, or it could be outgoings such as TV licenses or phone bills. No matter what bank account they have already, I would advise that they get a student bank account as they are generally better for students. They often have nice benefits such as an interest-free overdraft. And um, sometimes they can get things like free rail cards every year. So that's gonna be really handy if they, um, if they need to travel home and um, it would just save them a little bit of money on getting the train. Sometimes they get things like free tablets, um, subscriptions to things and access to student discounts as well. So um, it's a really good idea for them to have a shop around and, and see what's being offered um, on those different bank accounts. For those um, on courses over 30 weeks and three days up to 45 weeks, um, they can apply for additional funding. The amount they get is also dep dependent on the three factors um, that we just spoke about, um, but they could get a maximum of between £65 and £127 per week, depending on their own circumstances. So now we'll look at and what they're actually um, entitled to. So what can they potentially get? So the top figure in each circle represents the maximum um, that students can get. To receive this maximum, the household income threshold has to be £25,000 or less. As I said previously, though, everyone is guaranteed to a minimum amount, regardless of household income. For 2021 entry, it is the bottom figure in each of these circles, which is just under half of the maximum, as you can see. To get only the minimum figure, the upper thresholds are different in each case. So for living at home, it's £58,220. Away from home and excluding London, it's £62,286. And away from home and in London, it's £70,004. So as an example here, if the household income is somewhere in between £25,000 and £58,220, because the student is living at home, so we're looking at um, the, the top part of this, this chart here, the amount they get, will get will be somewhere in between £3,516 and £7,987, depending on what that um, the, the household income is. Um, and those are the factors. So if an application is made for a maintenance loan, everyone will get something because everyone is entitled to a minimum amount. So additional funding is really important. And I'll be honest, when I was at university, I wish somebody had spoken to me more about additional funding because I think it would have been really, really helpful. Um, so it's something that I really want you to take away from today, really have a look into. 
So additional help is available from a range of sources, including Student Finance England, universities, charities and regional organisations. So Student Finance in particular have grants to help those with a disability, childcare needs, parents learning allowance, um, dependent adults and also a loan for students who have an overseas placement as part of their course. Students can apply for a maintenance loan that helps towards their living costs whilst they're studying abroad, but as it is a loan that does get added to their overall loan amount for repayment purposes. All universities will also support students through scholarships and bursaries, so make sure um, that they check what is being offered at their chosen university. Here at the University of Lincoln, for an example, we have a number of scholarships and bursaries, including the Excellence Scholarship, which is worth £1,000, plus our University of Lincoln Scholarship, worth £500 per year for students with household incomes below £45,875. Um, but every university will be different, so check what they're offering. Um, at Lincoln, we also have now um, some new Vice Chancellor scholarships, each worth £5,000, and they're there to help cover living costs as students continue their education at degree level. So these scholarships do um, have an eligibility criteria, so it's definitely worth um, checking whether you know, you, they are eligible to receive this. For example, for budding scientists, one scholarship will be awarded to a new student on the university's computer science degree and another to a new student studying either biology or zoology. So that's just Lincoln. Every university will have different scholarships. There is a box on the main student finance application asking if they want to share their financial information with their firm university. And I really recommend that they tick this um, as if they do, the university can calculate what they will give them automatically. So it's almost like one less thing to worry about. So please keep an eye out for that box. It's also important to note there is actually now um, new £5,000 per year NHS funding for nursing, midwifery and some allied health courses, including paramedics. So some students may also be eligible for up to an additional £3,000. Um, they don't need to apply for this. It will be automatically calculated through their main application for the £5,000 if they do decide to apply for that. But please always encourage them to check the application process for any additional funding and to check when and how they apply. So, for example, it could be that they need to apply before enrolment or it could be that they need to apply after enrolment. And the best bit about all of this is that it's non-repayable. The only bit that is repayable um, is the, the loan for studying abroad because it is a loan. Um, so whatever they get, they get to keep and it's there to help them throughout their studies. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so now we're going to look at how to apply. So the application is normally done online through the gov.uk website. A paper-based application um, can be done. However, this does take a little bit longer, so it is normally easier to do it online. So remember to apply, your child will need their passport um, or other recognised form of ID. And they will also need their bank account details and a national insurance number as well. They will need to create an account online and they will need to make sure they're filling in the application step by step, making sure that they're being methodical and accurate. And the breadwinners um, will need to provide the financial evidence when required. Um, it does not all need to be done in one go. So um, once they have registered, they can stop and, and carry on as necessary. As mentioned earlier, it will ask them for their firm choice of institution. If they are not sure, then they can put in which they think it will be. It can really easily be changed. It's not a problem. And it takes in total about 30 minutes to complete the form. Um, but as mentioned earlier, it can actually take up to six weeks to process. Once received by Student Finance England, if they are happy with all of the evidence that's supplied and nothing is missing, um, it will then be formally processed. And they don't just apply at the start of their course and that's it. They apply for both loans each year of studying um, as circumstances obviously may change, but subsequent years should be much quicker due to Student Finance England already having a bulk of the information that they require. Um, and when they do this, they often have to do this by June time, but they are normally notified. Next slide, please. Thank you. So just a few um, top tips for you when applying. So just to make this a nice speedy application process, 
Um, they will need to fill in the form accurately and methodically and make sure they don't rush and they are just checking each and every stage and making sure that they're giving everything that they need. It's vital that they make sure um, they send Student Finance England all the financial evidence that they ask for. If they don't, they will send their application back to them to amend. And obviously this could then impact when they receive their loans. Um, I know when I apply for student finance, I think um, my mum sent off uh, the, the wrong thing or it wasn't quite what they wanted, uh, which means they had to send it back. And I remember feeling a little bit stressed and a little bit flustered. I got my loan on time and everything like that. And it was fine. But it's just something, you know, that little bit of stress that nobody needs. So um, just try and make sure you send them what they need um, when they need it, just to make it really smooth. Consequently, anyone supporting um, this application, uh, with financial information we'll need to know what to do and the evidence they will need to submit so my best advice for parents and carers is just to make um, you know an important note in your calendars for around the time student finance opens so that you can remind your child um, when it's time and or just ask them you know if you had that email yet have you had the notification have you heard from you know your college um, have they let you know that it's open yet um, but, but it also just means that you're aware that your help will be needed at some point to, to, with that application. Um, Student Finance England, as I said, set a deadline each year, normally late May or early June, and just make sure they hit that deadline. I know I keep repeating it, but it's, it's just a lot less stressful. Um, if they get their application, including all of their evidence to them by this date, they are guaranteed to have their funding in place when they start. If they miss their deadline, they will still get their funding, it just might be delayed. So now we'll have a look at repaying the loans. So the tuition fee loan and maintenance loan are added together to give one overall sum. So your child will be considered for repayment in the April, the year after graduation, and they'll pay through the UK tax system. So if they work for someone else, it comes out of their salary or in their yearly tax return if they are self-employed. So they only repay once earning above 27,000 £295 per year gross and they will pay then 9% of the difference between their gross salary and £27,295. If they drop below this £27,295 they will stop making payments. If they go back above that figure they start paying again. After 30 years if there is anything left the loan is written off and they will no longer need to make payments. They have 30 years to pay it off and that 30 years starts um, the 6th of April, the year after they graduate and then doesn't stop even if for whatever reason their salary drops below £27,295 and they stop making payments. The 30 years just rolls on whatever um, they are make, when, whether they are making payments or not. So here's um, a, just a bit of a, a summary of you know what, what will they actually pay. So um, remember, they will repay 9% of what they earn above the threshold, which is £27,295 a year, which works out £2,270 for £4 a month or £525 a week. So um, the example that we have here is that they are earning £30,000 per year and therefore they are £226 per month above the threshold of £2,274. That's, that's how much they are above that, that, monthly, um, that monthly threshold. So therefore, as I said in the previous slide, they will pay 9% of whatever they earn above the threshold. So in this case, it's going to be 9% of 226 pounds. Um, if anybody is a maths whiz, I will just give you a second to see if you want to figure out what you think that repayment might be per month. Um, Amy, if you can just click one more time for me. Brilliant, thank you. So that repayment, to be precise, is £20.34 a month, which is not exactly breaking the bank. And most people nowadays have phone contracts that cost more than that. So £20.34 a month um, to be getting, you know, a, a fantastic bit of education, um, and potentially earning more money in the future. And, and gaining all of those fantastic skills um, is really good. And um, if you could just pop the next slide on for me. Thank you. So here's a quick um, recap on repayments. So 
as you can see on the chart, at £27,295 or below, they'll pay nothing off their student loans at all. As they, earn, as they earn more, it goes up, but it still makes relatively little impact on their take home pay. And we have to remember it's the degree that got them there in the first place, earning that sort of money. So if they are earning £40,000, they'll be taking home somewhere between £2,400 and £2,500 per month. So paying back about £95. So it certainly makes it worthwhile to be able to earning that sum of money, broadening their knowledge, gaining those valuable um, life skills, valuable experience, all those transferable skills, um, and having an internationally recognised degree under their belt and just generally making themselves more employable as well. So just a few um, last bits to remember. So bigger borrowing does not mean bigger repayments. The way the repayments are calculated is based on their earnings, not what they have borrowed. If they want to change their firm choice of university before they go or they move, move universities while studying, they just let Student Finance England know. They will tell them if they need any additional information from them or their university, but it's very easy to do. After 30 years, any remaining student loans they have will be written off no matter how large they are. And as soon as they become live, the loans will accrue interest to either retail price index or up to retail price index plus 3%. How much interest is dependent on whether they are currently studying and how much they are earning once in work. Student loans um, do appear on credit files, but they, it will only affect their um, credit rating if they default on payments, just like you would with any other loan. And lastly, when applying for a mortgage, they will be asked to confirm if they have um, student loans, as all household outgoings are considered when making an application. So lastly, I'm just going to put some contact details up here, which should be really useful for you. So Student Finance England are the pros at this. They are the best people to go to if you do have any questions. So I have put their number on the screen for you. And um, they do also put updates on their Twitter and their Facebook, especially when um, finance applications um, open um, and things, you know, how to prepare for student finance and any information that you may need to, uh, need to know. So it's definitely worth doing your research um, and getting in touch with them if you have any questions. And obviously you can get in, in touch with us as well. Um, you can go on our website. Um, you can um, give us an email or, or give us a call and we'd be more than happy to answer any questions about student finance or university in general. We do have a dedicated fees and funding team um, who would be more than happy to, to help with any questions about student finance. And then obviously you can find us on the, the usual social media as well. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and lots of useful videos on YouTube too. So that brings me to the end of the student finance talk. I do hope you've um, found it useful and um, do let me know if you, if you do have any questions or, or get in touch with us. Thank you for listening. I will pass over to Kerry now. Great, thank you, Nicola. So hello everyone, um, my name's Kerry. I'm the assistant principal at East Coast College and I work alongside um, colleagues at the University of Suffolk on our degree offer. So I'm just gonna briefly take you through an introduction to the higher education offer that is actually available at East Coast College at um, either our Great Yarmouth, our Lowestoft or our Lowestoft Sixth Form campus. So um, East Coast College is a founding partner of the University of Suffolk um, and our, the university does validate and award all of our degree courses. Um, as a college, we've been running HE for over 25 years um, we, and we just offer one of the local offers for, for local students. So it may be you want to go away to a larger university, but equally we do have an offer for you to consider if that um, suits you. So currently we have over 30 different courses, uh, probably closer to 35 different courses now. And year on year, we have just over 400 learners studying on degree courses with us. We not only offer degree courses, but we um, can also offer um, higher national certificates, higher national diplomas, foundation degrees, and also higher and degree apprenticeships. Okay, so I, I just mentioned that we have um, a, a range of provision in, in our degree offer, which could include higher and degree apprenticeships. Um, 
We're also able to offer our programmes with relatively small group sizes, meaning that you do have um, excellent access to tutor support if you choose to study with us um, at the college. Um, our tutors are both academically qualified, as you would expect them to be, but they're also um, more, than, more than likely to be vocationally qualified in their subject as well, which we find um, ensures you can get um, course content delivery that is relevant um, to your progression in terms of employment following the degree. So all of our degrees are also supported by um, local employers, so we will never validate a degree unless an employer is backing us to do so. so that gives us some assurance that if you study a degree with us, you are more than likely to be suitable for the relevant employment following that degree. So um, we do actually show our course offer, which Amy is now showing you on the screen. There's, there's too many different courses to go through, as there would be for UEA and Lincoln. But of course, you can find out the specific course details on our website. Um, on the university's website or even through UCAS as well. So if you're interested, maybe you could check out those, those web resources. So we do add new courses to our offer year on year. So it's, um, it's worth checking the course offer regularly and also sharing that with family and friends, just in case there's a course that um, sparks their interest. So our new offer for, for this year is on the screen and you can see that we added quite a few um, higher national certificates to our offer, which proved quite popular with our, with our students. And then on the next slide, we have new courses that will be coming online for the first time from September. So this just illustrates that we have new and fresh courses coming through year after year. So just, just keep an eye on that. We also like you to know um, that we did um, have a QAA review um, recently and we received full confidence in that QAA review and for those of you that are maybe not so familiar QAA is the uh, performs a similar role to Ofsted does with your schools and colleges so we just like to point that out to make sure that you know um, that this particular review verified the quality of the academic and the student experience on our courses so we do just want to point out that it is high quality provision that you can study locally, if that's what you choose to do. So if, if going to a large university isn't for you. So our typical offer for our courses is again, shown on the screen in front of you. But if you are actually one of our own East Coast College students, including most of sixth form students, you will actually benefit from a reduced tariff um, guaranteed entry plan. So you can see on the screen that the original tariff is posted and then there'll be a reduced offer for you. So if you're from East Coast College or you're a parent of someone at East Coast College, please encourage your young person to speak to their tutors because this reduced offer may just help relieve some anxiety about them gaining entry to higher education. And this does apply to University of Suffolk wide, not just East Coast College. So learners can, um, study uh, their course and they will have to take out a student loan as um, Nicola has just been describing and that is supported through Student Finance England and again um, the college information team can provide students um, with guidance and support on making their application and again as Nicola says also contacting Student Finance England themselves is also a great um, source of support. So that was a little bit of a whiz through our higher education offer and you can see a few benefits of studying locally um, with us staying at East Coast College. We feel there are some benefits. Equally, there are benefits of going away to university. It just depends on your particular circumstance and what you're looking for. Um, and just before I um, sum up today, um, we do also just want to point out a very unique offer that we can offer you that is um, within our higher education provision. And this is a um, Maritime Debt Cadet Programme. So this is a new course we have on offer from September. It's for students who are interested in a career in the Merchant Navy and working around the world on a range of different ships, which could be cruise ships or tankers, cargo ships, etc. And the real benefit of this program, if it's a subject um, and career choice of interest to you, is that it's a fully sponsored three year program that will take you all the way through to either level four or level five, depending on the route that you choose. Um, which means you don't pay anything in terms of student loans or, or fees for your courses, and you'll also receive a training salary from a linked company. So you will complete either a higher national certificate or a foundation degree in nautical science, and you'll also work towards completion of a certificate of competency. 
And having these qualifications then means that you can walk out of the door fully qualified as a deck officer and work anywhere in the world on a merchant navy ship. So the cadet programme is split into five stages. Three of those will be on shore at the college and two of those will be at sea with your training company. While you're on shore, you'll study with us in our energy skills centre, learning all of the theory that applies at levels four and five. And you'll also be using our state-of-the-art simulators um, that will teach you how to navigate ships. And then while you're at sea with your sponsoring company, you will complete elements of your onboard training. So this is a very unique offer, and if anyone is interested in that 